Welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we're so glad you've set aside a few minutes to spend with us today. In each episode of this podcast, we'll share some of what we're learning in the work we do with kids and families on a daily basis at Daystar Counseling in Nashville, Tennessee. Our goal is to help you care for the kids in your life with a little more understanding, a little more practical help, and a whole lot of hope. So pull up a chair and join us on this journey from our little yellow house to yours. The Raising Boys and Girls podcast is brought to you in partnership with Minnow. Minnow provides meaningful screen time and shared experiences for families to help you grow in your faith together. Check them out at podcast.gominnow.com. That's podcast.gominnow.com. Sissy Goff. David Thomas. It's so fun to be back. I know. Happy season three. Happy season three. We have been thinking about and talking about doing this for a long time, but just now getting around <laughs> to actually doing it. But that only makes it, it makes us older, but it also makes us wiser. There it is. Yeah. There it is. I do have to say we're missing our friend Sarah. We are. But we are so excited for her that she has written two parenting books that will be coming out soon. And so we're excited for her to be kind of moving in her own parenting direction. We're all launching each other like you're launching children. (laughs) A lot of launching. A lot of launching. So season three. Season three. And we are going to be talking about intentional parenting. And Can we say, as we're talking about this, that when we wrote this book with Melissa, I don't know how many years ago, the subtitle we did not come up with. And in the beginning, we were like, really? But it's autopilots is for planes. Autopilot is for planes. And it has become something people have been so responsive to. And and I love that because that feels like even a picture of probably how parenting has changed in the last few years that people are leaning in with more intentionality than ever before. And also kind of how parenting is. You have really strong ideas about how something's going to go, and then it goes a very different (laughs) way. And who knew? Who knew it turned out to be a good thing? That is so true. I remember years ago, a mom saying to me, you know, I think parenting is like riding on a tandem. And she said, in the beginning, you're just pedaling along, taking care of your child, checking on them, and you're really in charge. And she said, by the time they hit adolescence, you're flopping on your bottom behind them, and they're the one totally in charge. (laughs) That is the Not truth. Not what you pictured. Mm-hmm. That is the truth. But still good, like we talked about in our New Year's episode. The goodness of God is still present. Yes. So as we start to talk about intentional parenting, there are a couple things we would say we have been thinking about in light of that. And and one is, you know, with us counseling 25 plus years, both of us, Melissa, a lot more than that. We started when we were seven. Thank you. Yes, we started when we were seven. So there are a lot of trends we see with kids that we'll be talking about off and on during this entire season. One, for example, that we talk about a lot in Are My Kids on Track season one, two, is a lack of self-regulation in kids, that we think about kids' emotions on a one to 10 scale, and that more kids than ever are living at 10 and 10 plus at this point. So that's a trend we want to talk about and more of what we can do in light of that. But we're also seeing trends among parents. And this intentional idea is part of that. And it makes me think of two conversations I had with two different sets of parents in my office. And David mentioned in our intro episode to the podcast that we have a lot of what we call parent consults. So it's parents who come in basically to say, does this sound normal? Is there anything I need to be doing differently? We have a lot of parents who will compare it to a well visit at the pediatrician's office. And we love doing those. It's always so fun to sit down with parents and do that. And we do it in person and on the phone, on Zoom at times. And anyway, I had two parent consults pretty close together that I thought were fascinating. And one was a mom who came in She had three girls between the ages of five and 15, so she had a lot of drama in her house, and she was exhausted. (laughs) And she sat down on my couch, and I could tell she was exhausted when she sat down, and she said, Sissy, this parenting thing, she said, nobody ever told me how hard it was going to be. She said, I just had no idea, and I am so overwhelmed. And she looked at me for a minute, and she said, I think it's why my parents never really did it. And knowing her story and 
anticipating, probably guessing a lot of your stories out there. I think what she was saying in that was her parents did raise her, but not at all the way she would want to raise her kids. And I think that's true for so many of you that you had parents who loved you, did their best. Thankfully, we know more now, and there are things we want to do differently, but how? What does that even look like? Fast forward, I had another conversation with the mom and dad, and they had an eight-year-old girl who was really angry. We're going to talk about eight-year-old angry girls some, if any of you have them. And they came in and sat down, and the dad led the conversation, and he said, so here's the deal. At this point in time, we have done every type of therapy that exists. We have done art therapy. We've done play therapy. We've done cognitive behavioral therapy. We've done talk therapy. And he said, our daughter's still struggling. And I have recently become convicted that basically we're outsourcing our parenting. He said, there has got to be something different that we can do at home that would change the course of things for our daughter. And what a beautiful statement. I just, it has stayed with me because I loved it so much. And he was saying, autopilot's not for planes. Like, I want to be intentional in a whole different way than even what this mom was saying, too, than my parents were with me. And I don't know what that looks like, and we need help. And that's where we're so excited to lean in with you all on this season and talk more about what that can look like. Yes. And we want to talk around some of the words that we are hearing the most in our offices. In fact, when we wrote this book, we took 12 of the words that we were hearing the most. Parents who were saying, I want to be more connected. I want to be more consistent. I want to be more balanced. and More patient. <laughs> yes. And thinking about those being things that we all want, but how do we get there? And that's what we wanted to do in the book. That's what we're committed to doing in the podcast is Breaking that down beyond the great word and all the things that we want, what are the practical steps? What are the nuts and bolts to getting to those places? And so that's where we want to head, and we're excited to say that we'll talk around those ideas, and then we are going to define in every episode what we're going to call three intentional practices. We want to really give you some practical boots on the ground, things you can do immediately with your kids. And that's what those intentional practices are going to be. And then Melissa is going to come in every time, as she does, and anchor us to some rich truth. We're going to have a spiritual moment at the end of every episode as well. And we can't wait to unpack all this with you Yes, we can't wait. And in the midst of this season, there is an overarching message we would want you all to hear, and we're going to come back to it in one of our last episodes, but to say, it is never too late, you guys. And Melissa quotes Eugene Peterson a lot, and I love this statement of his. He said, the most important part of being a parent is being a person. And in light of that, you are a fallible person. As intentional as you are, you're going to blow it a lot. And there is so much grace. And and David and I talk so often, even when we do parenting seminars, about how we would never want folks to walk away from time with us feeling like, I blew it. I missed all those things. I did all those things wrong. That is never our message to you. The message is it's never too late. It's never too late to go back and say, oops, I did blow it on this. And I want to ask for your forgiveness and let's do something different because you are a person and there is so much grace for you. There is so much grace for your kids. And we will even talk more about that, what it looks like to be a person and a parent in the midst of all the ideas that we're going to talk about. And and we might even share a little of how we're practicing these things as people too on the episodes, but we're just so honored always, you guys, that you would let us join you on this journey. And we're excited to jump in with more intentionality and how we can all do that together. The Raising Boys and Girls podcast is brought to you in partnership with Minnow. Minnow helps you make screen time meaningful for your family, which shows kids love and values parents' trust. Check them out at podcast.gomino.com. That's podcast.g-o-m-i-n-n-o.com. It's our joy to bring the experience and insight we gain through our work beyond the walls of the Daystar House. Join us next time for more help and hope as you continue your journey of raising boys and girls.